punk music and a demon story? I'm in. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. As part of my coverage of the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival, today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 comedy horror stop motion animated film Wendell and Wild, which will be released on Netflix on October 28th. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie related content like reviews, rank lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Wendell and Wilde stars the vocal talents of Lyric Ross, Keegan-Michael Key, and Jordan Peele, and was directed by Henry Selleck. It tells the story of a rebellious teenager, Cat Elliot, voiced by Lyric Ross, who summons two demon brothers to the land of the living. Stop motion films have been around for a hundred years now. Compared to other forms of animation, though, they make up a much, much smaller percentage of the total output. For a long time, stop-motion animation was largely relegated to holiday TV specials, but the style began to really gain traction a few decades ago, and eventually even became the focus of studios like Ardman Animations and Leica. It's a painstaking medium to work with, but an interesting and satisfying one. The style can and has been used for just about any genre, but the inherent qualities of puppets and miniatures tend to lend themselves to horror, or at least creepy stories. Some of the most popular and well-loved stop-motion films fall into this category, and several of them were directed by Henry Selick. Well, 13 years after his last film, Selick is back with another horror-infused stop-motion tale that harks back to many of the family-friendly horror classics we know and love. Since stop-motion films are defined by their unique style, it seems only right that we begin by talking about the animation. It probably comes as no surprise, but it looks great. Unlike CG animation, stop-motion tends to have more consistency to its quality over the years. It's not about perfection or photorealism, so the advancements in technology manifest in other ways. In this case, the animation still has that typical warmth and sense of tangibility imbued by the puppets, but there's a glossier, more polished look to everything, thanks to some CG augmentation. That, however, doesn't lessen the animation. It's got excellent production design, with some detailed sets and locations, moody atmosphere and lighting, and of course, interesting character design. There's that classic, exaggerated caricature quality to many of these characters, which only adds to the creepiness and overall aesthetic. And that aesthetic is one of the things that stands out the most with this film. The movie's got a number of familiar qualities that are bound to draw comparisons to the likes of The Nightmare Before Christmas, Coraline, and other stop-motion horror films, but Wendell and Wilde still feels like it has a unique identity. I was not expecting this to be as punk-infused as it is. What starts out feeling like a predictable trope to reinforce the idea that the main character is rebellious ends up becoming an essential component of the overall vibe. Yes, Cat is a rebellious teen who walks around school with a boombox and DIY punkified school uniform, but the punk aesthetic extends beyond the character design and personality. It's embedded in the story, in the soundtrack, and even in the animation style. Although Wendell and Wilde has an intriguing premise and engaging style, the story itself is a bit of a mixed bag. The demon-based premise has some unique and bizarre qualities, but that central plotline does play out a tad predictably. It's not necessarily a bad thing, but doesn't offer much in the way of surprises. But that's not to say that this film is without its unexpected qualities. Wendell and Wilde is an overstuffed film, both thematically and story-wise. There are a multitude of subplots and supporting characters that get introduced throughout the story, many of which extending far beyond the spooky demon-summoning plot at its core. It might sound like I'm making this up, but somehow this film expands to incorporate topics like the prison industrial complex and school-to-prison pipeline, community collapse and revitalization, and even the dangers of the corporate stranglehold that company towns face. These are all interesting ideas, and do fit the story, but it's all just a little too much. Instead, the film works best when it's focusing on Kat and her story. 
The film's called Wendell and Wilde, and they're definitely fun, with Key and Peele doing a silly demon version of their typical comedy style, but this is much more Cat's story. She has a troubled past and is haunted by a traumatic event from her childhood. She's never been able to forgive herself for that event, and we see how it's shaped who she's become. And so the core cat-centric storyline explores grief and regret and how you can't change the past, only face it and break the shackles of guilt. The memories and past will always be there, but they'll no longer be in control of your present. This movie takes a page out of Pixar's playbook by creating a tangible manifestation of an intangible concept. Wendell and Wilde are literal demons in this story, but they're also representative of Cat's inner demons. And so their role in this film and the takeaway message is one that's more profound than it might initially seem. Wendell and Wilde is a dark movie. That's not all too uncommon with stop-motion horror films, but it seemed like it tackled some thematically heavier stuff than typical, even if it wasn't particularly scary. Unlike most other horror-infused stop-motion films, this is rated PG-13. Thematically, it makes sense, but it does bring into question some of the more kid-aimed elements and humor. It almost feels like it was designed to be PG, but then got stuck with a higher rating after everything was already done. Again, not as scary and potentially traumatic to younger viewers as something like Coraline, but thematically mature, especially with the incorporation of certain subplots. It's an extremely enjoyable film, and definitely one that felt tailor-made for me, but I do sort of wish that the story had been reined in a bit to primarily focus on just Cat. All right, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one has got to be the themes. Now, there are a lot of thematic considerations here when you take all the subplots into account. And while I do think the topics of the prison industrial complex and town revitalization are intriguing to explore in this kind of context, the themes I was really impressed by here were those surrounding Kat and her story. The dual nature of the demons here, both literal and inner, was a clever way to tackle some of the loftier and darker elements of the story. There's one scene in particular, towards the beginning of the third act, that hits this concept especially hard, and I thought it was a perfect animated representation of the film's overall message. The second pro is the animation. I feel like almost every time I review an animated film these days, the animation ends up in the pros. But once again, it's a worthy inclusion here. I've always been fascinated by stop-motion animation. It's such a tedious and painstaking process, so there's an appreciation element that always comes along with it, but the actual result is spectacular looking too. The character design is great, the sets are detailed and interesting, and despite the CG augmentation, the puppetry still gives everything that tangible feeling that only stop motion is capable of providing. On the con side, the biggest issue is how overstuffed this film is. There's no getting around it. There are just way too many subplots, themes, and ideas jammed into this movie. None of them are bad, and some smaller combination of them might have worked, but as it stands, there's just way too much going on. It splits the audience's focus and lessens the impact of all of the individual ideas and plotlines as a result. If this film had narrowed its scope to only focus on Kat and her interactions with Wendell and Wilde, I think it would have been a much stronger and more well-defined story. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying any of the films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Wendell and Wilde 4 out of 5 paws. It's a film that's overflowing with ideas to a fault, but remains a delightfully dark, family-friendly-ish adventure in the twisted vein of other stop-motion family horror from the last three decades. It's a punk-infused tale of demons, both literal and metaphorical, that's hellbound to be a new stop-motion classic. I would recommend Wendell and Wilde to fans of stop-motion animated horror films. If you can't get enough of the classic creepy designs and scary stories, then you'll probably enjoy not only this film on its own, but the nostalgia that comes along with it. This movie does go down some unspooky rabbit holes, and it isn't really that scary, but the thematic darkness definitely earns it that PG-13 rating. If you liked Wendell and Wilde, I would definitely recommend The Nightmare Before Christmas. 
This is another stop-motion animated film directed by Henry Selick and features a lot of similarities to this movie. There's the creepy horror-infused characters and sets, a journey to another land, and even a few overlapping themes. If you're interested in another stop-motion film that's a little scarier, you should definitely check out Coraline. This is another movie directed by Henry Selick, his most recent film before Wendell and Wilde, and is a very creepy, well-crafted, coming-of-age horror fantasy. And if you just can't get enough stop-motion, you might want to watch Corpse Bride. Amazingly, this one's not directed by Henry Selick, but features some very similar character designs, concepts, and an overarching melancholic tone. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Wendell and Wilde? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite stop-motion animated film? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. All right, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this review, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.